This is my 1980 Honda XL 250. And it's a wonderfully reliable machine and serves me as well as I need to be served. Except for one recent problem. Oh, it knows and it's not happy. The Don Sputterer broke off. There was time back in the late Pleistocene when I probably would have enjoyed a broken sputterer and ripped and snorted around because I'm cool. But now that I pay a mortgage and yell at kids about my lawn, I wanna fix it. Also, fairly illegal. You start a fire and you're responsible for that fire. I don't wanna start a fire. Let's fire it up and you can hear what we're dealing with. At an idle, it's not so bad. But that's the kind of noise that doesn't endear you to the neighbors. So let's see if we can get that fixed. So the parts of a homemade muffler aren't particularly complicated. I've got a few pieces here. I've got a chunk of old truck exhaust pipe that once I saw off the motorcycle muffler, which is nicely tapered, I'll be able to slip it just inside and weld it up. I have got a piece of car exhaust pipe. you notice that I have drilled a series of holes. Those are all incredibly carefully calculated. Each and every one has an angle that took an entire team of computer experts to figure out. And it's important that you do not clean up the burrs on the inside. Those uh, give the exhaust gases its, um, we'll call it a rotation vector that allows that uh, sound to swirl and uh, reverse amplify off of the shell casing of the muffler itself thus negating the pop 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 pop. I've also got a washer that I'm going to weld on top of that. Clearly I need some round bits to fill in the end of this and uh, for a while I was a bit stumped but I stumbled across an old lawnmower belt tensioner pulley. Just a stamped steel one and it uh, was very easy to drill out the rivets and now I've got my round bits. So these are going to go together like this. All right. And then uh, it will slip down inside like that. And on top of that, we are going to pack some fibrous material. What I wanted was the Brillo pads, you know, the old scrubby Brillo pads. What I found instead were these. So steel wool comes in a lot of different varieties, uh, you know, triple lot and single lot and stuff like that. I don't know exactly what these were. I, I know they were they were kept hidden in the back, and all that was on the packaging was uh, the words "Who hurt you?" So this is my packing material. I, I'm pretty sure it'll eventually burn out, but it won't be my problem. I have got another. round twirly bit, that's the other side of that pulley, and then a big honkin' washer. You can find big honkin' washers in the hardware store. You just need to, to look in the big honkin' washer section. Uh, let's see, big honkin' washers. Oh! Yeah, that'll work. That'll go on like that. And then I've got this piece of what I think used to be a stroller, maybe a kid's play swing. Anyways, that is going to be the uh, sputter outer part there. And we're just all not going to think about how much it reminds us of a Smurf penis. A Smurf penis. Anyways, that is how it is all going to work. And I'm just gonna weld it up now and we'll give it a try.
Here are the finished parts. We have the muffler barrel. Notice those fancy slits in the side. That'll become apparent in a second. We have got clumsy fingers. We've got the the putt putt joke here. Ooh, look at that. Now I'm sure this is I, I even I even took the time to smooth this off so that I got all the zoomies. But this might come as a crazy surprise to you, but it turns out that trying to weld garbage together in a windstorm, sometimes it doesn't weld the best. But I believe we have enough of a structural adhesion there that that is going to be just fine. And then the piece de resistance. The Smurf penis. Notice that up inside there, I actually gave it a bit of a mouth so it can gobble down all the exhaust. All the exhaust gases because nothing's better than goblin smurf penis. Anyways, here's how it's gonna work. We take the putt putt choke and we drop it down inside the muffler barrel. We take a conveniently located piece of wood. tap it down until the old rusty screw hits. Um, I don't know if you can find a piece of wood with an old rusty screw in your hardware store, but I was able to locate it in mine. See, there is the putt-putt choke down in there. And then we're going to take this stainless steel squirrel's nest and we're going to floof it up and it will go right in there. And then Smurf Penis finishes it off. This should be such a tremendously heavy overkill that all of the put puts should go where they need to go. And we will no longer sound like a cat in a wood chipper. So I'm going to go and weld up these slices. By welding up these slices, of course, I will then attach the putt putt choke down inside there. And we should be ready to attempt to weld this arguably the only weld that needs to look pretty in the entire operation. A little nervous that we can make it look pretty. We'll do our best. But yeah. Nice. Utter. Utter. Perfection. Alright. Let's go weld the wiener on. The big reveal. There it is. Sealed up tight. Nice. I even hit it with the flap wheel to give it that I'm a better welder than I actually am kind of look to it. Very nice. So we need to get the old muffler off the old muffler. We need to get the exhaust system off the motorcycle so that we can fit this to it and stuff in. So here is our little ripper. Fun fact on these Hondas, apparently they don't actually start with a frame. They start with the muffler and then bolt the frame and all the stuff to it. Because I really don't have a motorcycle anymore. But I did get it out. Here's hoping I can get it back. This is what I've got to work with. And this is what we need to attach. We need to come and cut this off at whatever location that will fit neatly into with enough material I can still weld it. After that, we've got to reattach a little mounting bracket there because this is far too heavy to be hanging off the back of the motorcycle. So that's what we gotta do. I'm gonna take a real ginger slice right in through here and I think we'll probably grind it back rather than trying to cut it back that's going to be the basic idea. Right like that. Perfect. Ah, look at that. I was even able to reattach the guard mounts. And I, I, I deeply appreciate that the welds where no one can see them uh, look okay. Whereas uh, those that are easily visible look like toothpaste applied during a seizure. But, grinder and paint, right? Speaking of that, I'm about to go give it the 
a lick of the good stuff and uh, a brief dry in the hot sun and then I'm gonna try to stick it on there tacky without getting too many fingerprints in it and we'll see how she sounds well there it is all done it's not so bad I even got all the guards back on now admit it you really thought it was gonna look god awful horrible the way I was joking about it you thought so admit it it looks okay now you notice in an homage to the Smurf penis, I went ahead and left the tip blue. You get right down to it. The tip is really where all the excitement happens anyways. Let's find out if this worked. I'm gonna go put the camera down and we'll fire her up for the first time. Nice. Well, I'm going to put the rack on it and call that a successful bodge. One Honda muffler made from garbage. Well, I just took it out for some zoomies and I can't... I think they're all still in there. You know, the only thing that's really different is that the, the, the mental horsepower gain that comes from no mufflers. That's the only part that's different. So... She, she accelerated as fast or as slow as it always did and held 60 miles an hour and I don't think it's building any back pressure so I think we're good to go. I did find this in the road. So somebody's probably having a bad day about now. Yeah. Great success.